crusades. And they just summarize and say, all right, march to the front. Hallelujah. If, please appreciate the music director. Let me use this. He's so smart. Hallelujah. Come on, appreciate him. Hallelujah. Now, if... Hallelujah. I'd like us to read the first three words. If you have King James, almost all versions should be the same. Are you ready? One, two, read. No, no, verse two. Sorry. Verse two. One, two, read. You people are all failed. Come down. I said the first three. How many? What? kind of some versions are you're reading amplified Hebrews 12 did I say Hebrews what verse 2 just the first three words looking up to Jesus hallelujah is it, is it on your Bible looking on to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith look up please it's amazing how that many believers want to press into God. We want to be more like Him. And um, many believers want to grow. We want to step into dimensions. Hallelujah. But then, until you have a reference point. Are you following me now? Until you have a reference point, you will not know when you have become what you are pursuing. Hallelujah. Every time you are pursuing a thing, you must have a picture so that when you get there or when you get whatever you are pursuing you will know you have arrived am i correct there are so many believers who want to know the lord but we've not taken out time to examine his life i've had very little teachings about the person jesus i've had different teachings about the anointing i've had different teachings about um growth spiritual growth and all of these things but how come we want to become like christ and we never get to talk about him the only time they talk about Jesus in meetings is crusades. And they just summarize him and say, Alright, march to the front. Hallelujah. If, please appreciate the music director. Let me use this. He's so smart. Hallelujah. Come on, I appreciate him. Hallelujah. Now, if my goal is to become like him, Hallelujah. The more I see him, are you following me now? I look at his life. And then I begin to see a need to conform my life to look like him. Are you following me now? But if you do not see him, you don't have an idea of what you are supposed to be changed into. Hallelujah. So several believers in their honest and sincere pursuit for God are being changed into different things. And what we are becoming does not look like the Jesus that we are trying to be. So different teachings and revelations are molding us to become different things. Because the object, our reference point, we don't even know the kind of person we want to be like. Who is our standard, the reference, the Jesus? We preach about so many things. Yet the central focus, the one who we are supposed to be like, we don't have an idea. And so every kind of teaching forms us to become like a prophet, an apostle a member of so and so ministry are you following me now a member of so and so denomination because you become like whoever is your reference point hallelujah if all you have to see is your pastor you become like him you'll be very fortunate if your pastor is like christ then you become like christ but if your pastor is not like christ Hallelujah. And it's important that in our attempt to press into the things of the Spirit. See, the realm of the Spirit is a very complicated realm. You can become anything. All you need to do is press. You want to be a herbalist, press. The method is the same. I mean, the requirements are almost the same. You want to learn how to still press. You want to know Satan more, just press. So, as you press and say more of you you suddenly enter a strange realm and then you see many things that you can become like and it's important to scan through and several things will present pictures
scriptures that represent success greatness achievement you've got to drive them away and say there's one i'm looking for give me a reference the word of god has painted a picture that is in my mind and you are nice but you don't look like the reference i can use you you can guide me but i do not see you being the reference you are a good leader but i do not see the reference in you and suddenly when the holy ghost helps you you say this is him when mary began to look for him they were looking around and when she found him she said rabboni she knew that he was the one are you following me now so the first question tonight is who are you pressing to become like because we have molded ourselves in different fashions that in our sincere quest to love god we found ourselves becoming many things hallelujah there is only one standard that's why i started by reading it says looking up to who joshua selman koinonia yourself your pastor no no I, I i believe in the place of spiritual guidance are you following me now but i'm teaching you that for maximum transformation this is the dynamics of real transformation let me tell you something friends the best of every man on this earth is still a man are you listening to me the best of every man is still a man looking up to jesus the author and the finisher of our faith our reference point our gauge the true standard hallelujah you look up to jesus to know what success should look like in the kingdom you look up to jesus to know what progress should look like in the kingdom you look up to jesus to know what fulfillment should be jesus christ is perfect theology he is the expression of the full intention of the father for every man when he came and walked upon the earth the bible says the word became flesh god needed to give us a reference so that we would pattern our lives after that reference and so jesus walked upon the earth and he exhibited all the attributes we are trying to exhibit so if you want to be rich by the time you become a millionaire you look to jesus if what you have become doesn't look like who he is you followed another way and that means there's disaster are you following me now if you want to be anointed by the time you touch what you call anointing and it does not look like what you see in jesus christ then you know that you got something else it says looking it didn't say wishing or dreaming looking set your gaze onto jesus as you press it's a scene then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run so hebrews chapter 12 is talking about the race the pressing he said well hold on paul had told them run so many of them want to stand around and say hold on i need to let you know that as you are running and as you are pressing let your gaze be on jesus so that you will know you can appreciate your progress i follow me now you can know when when you are truly looking out to jesus you will know whether you are growing or not hallelujah paul said my little children in whom i travel until christ be formed in you and so it's our greatest desire to be with him koinonia and the holy spirit is here to guide us and help us when we stay in his presence then we become like him and then when we become like him we are empowered to reveal him in our world Emmanuel.
is our desire in this place that as God equips us for the glorious destiny he has for us as he equips us to represent him it's paramount that we understand that our goal is to be like Jesus the Bible makes us to understand that the apostles when they met Peter and he spoke at the Jerusalem council they looked at him and they said we know this guy this is a, an ordinary fisherman but he had been with Jesus so much that he was like him when they went to Antioch the people saw them and said remember there was a man who behaved like this he loved people just like these people are loving he healed the sick remember that man that was crucified don't you see him being reproduced there's a soup opera that many of you like about a man whose spirit entered another man what do we call it second chance his spirit entered another man and he started behaving like him is that correct so when the spirit that was in Jesus comes and begins to find expression in you men begin to see that the closest expression to the Jesus I can see is you how come your love life looks so close to what I see in the world how come your understanding is similar every time I read see if the people in your community read the Bible and they don't think about you you don't look like Jesus because you should be the closest expression of everything they find Colossians oh Lord make us more like you it's our desire make us more like you are you ready tonight the Lord is going to be walking on us very briefly hallelujah the Lord is going to be walking on every one of us God is building us radically pruning us and bringing us to points where we truly become competent ambassadors to represent his government our goal is not just to get ourselves spiritually enlightened nobody has received an award for reading Genesis to Revelation nobody has received an award for climbing scriptures from Genesis to Revelation all those who have been loved by God are those who have dared to make the word of God seated in their spirits so much that they become like him church history is full of men and women who were the representation of Jesus in their generation hallelujah Colossians chapter 3 and I read verse 1 if you then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God verse 2 set your affections such a powerful if you're ever looking for a scripture that talks I, i'm not done i'm just stopping because the scripture is really touching me if you're ever looking for a scripture that addresses true christian character and the life the exemplary life of a believer you find it in colossians chapter 3 and 4. so for many of you who have been crying and say god walk upon my character two chapters for you colossians chapter 3 and verse 4 have revealed the highest manifestations of Christian conduct set your affections on things above not on things of the earth that's what we call carnality that's what we call materialism setting your affections on things on the earth and not on things that are above where Christ is seated verse 3 for ye are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God when Christ who is our life shall appear then shall we also appear with him in glory verse 5 now we begin mortify therefore your members listen look up I hope you know Paul was not speaking to unbelievers hallelujah he wasn't speaking to unbelievers he was speaking to men and women who were going to shake the cities he said mortify deaden let's read on your members which are upon the earth 
Then he says, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the sons of disobedience. In the which ye once walked, when ye lived in them. But now, put off all of this. Are you, are you there? Tonight God is going to be walking upon us. As I, as I read the list, I'll not be doing too much of talking. Let the word of God speak. Some things will be flogging you from this scripture. It will rise out of this Bible and hit you. Some are already hitting me as it hits you. Yield to that hitting. Tonight is not the night where you pretend as though it's touching your neighbor. Because I will share and then we'll raise a cry. Are you listening to me? We want to truly represent the kingdom in its fullness. Let me tell you the proof that you are truly Christ-like. It's not when you heal the sick. If you have to pray in tongues for your community to know you are a Christian, you are not a real Christian. That every time they see you, you display at your default the attributes of the Christ life. There's nothing as beautiful as seeing the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit come upon a truly yielded life full of character and expression of the fullness of what Christ is. Did you know that your lifestyle affects people even more than your, what you do on stage? Hallelujah. There are certain people that respect you today, and especially for we ministers, not because of the sermon you preached. You truly represented Jesus at a very default state somewhere that you do not even know there are many of you that are treasured and held in high esteem not because you healed any sick body hallelujah the man we call um the great evangelist billy graham it wasn't recorded that he had many manifestations of the spirit in his meeting if he had any at all we don't have records that he of course there will be pockets of miracles here and there but he didn't seem to in quote as we will put moving power you know have everybody lie down and say okay you know this and that but till today there's no president in america that doesn't go to pay homage whether he's a freemason whether he's born again what did that man show the world that compelled the united states of america to put it it was is almost a law there are certain people that seem to command the attention of their territories because they are the truest representation of Christ has nothing to do with denomination has nothing to do with whether you are orthodox or Pentecostal living faith, cooking celestial church, whatever it is that's not the issue hallelujah so let's read on this is koinonia we are becoming more like him hmm. Are you there? Verse 8. Put off all of these. Are you ready to hear the this now? Alright. Anger. Anger. Oh. Put off these. Dear ambassadors of the Most High. Those who want to represent Him. Put off all of these. Yes, you are anointed. Yes, you can heal the sick. Yes, you are prosperous you are a multi-millionaire but put off this anger wrath malice come on anointed people malice hallelujah i hope you like this teaching tonight blasphemy filthy communications Ha, look up channel O and MTV and all kinds of media programs have cultured the language of many people including believers and so it's true that you are born again you are serving in church you are anointed I mean all you need to do is blow the and you see people just moving around but evil communication your communication 
has made people question the anointing upon your life. And people say, I cannot reconcile what I see on stage with what I see around. I can't reconcile it. And the Bible says, so that this thing will not corrupt your being an ambassador. Lay aside even filthy communication. Let's read on. Lie not to one another, verse 9. Ah! Nigerians, lie not to one another. Businessmen, lie not to one another. Prospective politicians, lie not to one another. Those who are seeking favor from different people, lie not to one another. Hallelujah. Seeing that you are put off the old man. The Bible calls all of these the attributes of who? The old man. And we have so many new creation people. I have been crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. But when you are shouting new creation, this is part of it. You must embrace the entirety of it. You can't embrace prosperity and wealth and anointing and power and charisma. And then you refuse to embrace this because it wasn't written in the Old Testament. For many of you who have a serious problem with the Old Testament, there's a nice scripture centered around the New Testament. Hallelujah. A woman called an around tree who are trying to get her books so that we'll stock it in the library. Within the gates and the priestly bride. I like studying on people who have been to heaven. I love it. We all love it because after the Bible, they are the closest that can say things that I like. We have many noisemakers writing all kinds of books. Before they write the book, they have calculated how much the profit is. Both upper limit and lower limit. You, do, you really don't have a desire to bless the world. And so, we need... Did you notice that most, if not all, the people that go to heaven come back and write books free? Or audio? I, I've, I've noticed this. Have you noticed that this is a trend? When they come back to heaven... They really don't want, even want to collect one naira. I'm not saying you shouldn't let your ideas bless you. So somebody is writing books now. You say, ah, you have started with me. No, no, no. Write your book. We'll buy it. Hallelujah. But this woman was with Jesus Christ. I mean, literally. In supernatural encounters. We have a series that we'll be considering. Called Supernatural Encounters. And we'll be playing some videos of men and women just like you and me. Who have walked some parts and realms where we're watching something uh, today in our house on a man who is transported by the spirit you know philip's airways many of you call it we have real men who are doing philip's airways not not imitation by our traditional people isn't that interesting and the guy said the lord told him that a time will come we will need it hallelujah a time will come when they refuse to give us visas. We say, all right, have a nice day. I need to be at the airport in the next five minutes. How about that? If you don't believe this, you can have a nice day, honestly. Because this is, we are training you to become this. So if you have a problem with this mindset, the Lord is helping us in Jesus' name. And this woman was with Jesus Christ throughout 2005. Can you imagine? Throughout 2005, she was with Jesus Christ every day. You know, when I hear stories like this, I feel ashamed of what I know that I call revelation. Because when they asked this woman, I, had to, I, I still have it, I believe, my laptop, her interview with Sidroth is supernatural. And you know what this woman said? When they asked her, Sidroth was asking and said, Why don't you love? Why did you ask him about power, miracles, the revival coming? Guess what she said? She said, I'm not interested. Ah, Joshua, he stung me up. Me that have been pressing. Oh God, reveal the seventh dimension of power. Here is a woman who has been with Jesus for one solid year. She has become so much like him that her priorities have radically changed. If your priorities do not change in the presence of God, you are not really changing. Hallelujah. And now let me quote this woman. She, she said when she was in heaven, she saw, she entered a room and she saw the saints of old and the angels. They were mapping out the strategy for the revival that is coming. Hallelujah. 
So she was invited. They invited several generals who pioneered the ancient revivals and were asking them what were some of the challenges. Why did some revivals get corrupted? I follow me now. And one of the issues that this woman raised was the issue of character. Many people corrupted these revivals. Hallelujah. And so God is communicating to the entire fivefold ministry that while you are opening people up, that's why we have miracle services. We have time for impartation. But as you receive the anointing on one side, when you are about to run and say, you see how much I'll make you in one month with this money. As you're running, God will hold your leg and say, come back. You have not finished reading it. Not too fast. Many of us are saying, God, give me this power. See, all these millionaires, the people are suffering investment. Give me power. But just one. I know somebody that I can go and pray for. The senator. Immediately he's healed. I'll tell him as you are healed, collect uh, my bank account number. Hallelujah. Corruption. And the man who is praising God suddenly begins to question you. How many of you have been to a meeting and after a nice and powerful sermon, they just begin to do funny things on stage that just kills your spirit. You were so blessed. I mean, these people represented Jesus Christ so much. And later on, you see somebody with Manasseh who just come and whisper something. I'll say, it's okay, I'll address that. And then as the air, I mean, celebrating miracles, suddenly funny things begin to happen. So I go and manipulate Jamfa. And I say, Jamfa, just look straight. There's one rich man there. And because he has the gift of the prophetic, it will work. Are you hearing me? Oh, yes, it will work. Let me tell you, if we hold every one of you here, I can tell you everything about your life as the Holy Spirit grants grace. That's the dangerous thing about the anointing. Hallelujah. All we need to do is tear up the atmosphere and begin to pass mics around ourselves. And you will see the accurate delivery of the word of God. But what happens? As I'm prophesying it, you, you follow this way and wait for me. See, let me tell you, don't laugh about this. The judgment of God is falling strong upon the church. And God will prune and sanitize everything until we become a perfect bride. A true bride that can represent Him. Hallelujah. And so, a man gives a very pretty lady like this. A wonderful word of knowledge. You see the anointing walking. And suddenly the remaining unrenewed part of his makeup just looks at her and ah, now this lady is already kneeling down because he gave her a powerful word your name is Gladys this, I know her so it's not a word of knowledge hallelujah and I know you your father is she says yes yes sir says, yes, ah, you want to know more follow me you just leave and, and then says please tell me more about my life then he says, alright, I'll give you time. Just get my number. When are we truly going to represent Christ? In a manner that will compel the world to know that there is something about this Christianity. Let me tell you, if it's only miracles we used to change the world, we are going to be in trouble. Because voodoo is warming up. Are you listening to me? Confucius, you need to go to Asia. And then you'll be home. You know all these manifestations we do and shout? I tell you the truth, they will cross their legs and stare at you like this. Because when you go there to visit a man, as you enter his room, you see him hanging on the air. Have you, had, have you gotten to that dimension? I'm saying it will take more than the gifts of the Spirit. Are you following me? There's a place for that. The world will see miracles. Hallelujah. But I'm saying it takes more than that. What if everybody in your environment is healed? What else will you do? How else will you represent Christ? We have so many men of God. Nice people. But then later you go and you just bribe in the office. It's on your table. All kinds of evil activities happen. And the Bible is saying for you to be a true ambassador, you must be, there's no escaping. There must be a thorough worship. Hallelujah. So that who you are on stage and before people 
is who you truly are in the secret when you get to that point you are truly you are practically and experientially entered the dimension the bible calls holiness hallelujah can i preach this please and then we raise a cry and pray because it will not profit us completely if all we do is just worship him and give him all the praise and you know all of us because we are praying in the spirit and you know the wonderful thing about the things of god is that when you operate a particular law of the spirit you will get the results so as you pray in tongues and you are diligent studying the word what happens your spirit is being trained so you are anointed you come and stand and all you need to do is begin to pray in tongues and you see this dense presence of god but as that is happening what happens lack of character begins to arise that's why Paul said, I keep my body. This body is stubborn. You must keep it. Part of your ministry is to keep it. Hallelujah. Let's read on. Lie not to one another, seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds, and have put on the new one, man, which is renewed in the knowledge. The word there is not renewed. The word there is being renewed. Hallelujah. In knowledge after the image of him that created him verse 12 put on look up the Bible first told us what to put off you see the difference between Jesus Christ and our false prophets they tell you the problem but they never tell you the solution say there's somebody what is the solution put off all of these things that do not give a true picture of who Jesus Christ is. How many unbelievers have backslided because we have misrepresented Christ in our social environment? Hallelujah. I once took a bus with a pastor some years ago and we were going somewhere for a crusade. And I was chartering a car, so I decided I told him, Come and let's ride together. And while we were riding, we got somewhere. And wanted to enter and um, they had blocked the place they needed us to turn and it would be a whole walk and when it was time to turn i mean the driver was about to turn and the security man said no the pastor just spoke through the mirror and conjured one lie ah i was i sat back in my mind i said god you know i love you i really love you when we finished he looked at me and then he smiled see the difference between an unbeliever and a believer is that when you trespass the principles of god the holy ghost you feel the check in you when you get to a point where you are comfortable with misrepresenting christ you need a retreat quick quick whatever it is that you're doing you need a radical retreat alone hallelujah praise the lord we must be thoroughly washed we want the power of the Holy Ghost. We want the anointing. Many of us want to stand on the stage and have people come and hear you. Hear me, brother. If you are not thoroughly worked upon, the anointing that comes on you can kill you. You know, we like anointing. And you just pack it, see that, say, Manasseh, I need all the grace upon your life. Not so, my brother. Not in this revival that is coming. There are some things that you don't get by impartation. You work it by your diligence and intimacy with the holy ghost hallelujah let's read up quickly because i really want us to pray and understand there will soon be a program in the church put on therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved are you ready now tender mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness patience or long suffering he said, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, do what? If any man has a quarrel, ladies, even as Christ forgave you, do what? Above all these things, put on what? Love, which is the bond of perfectness. Let the peace of God rule your hearts to which also ye are called 
in one body and be ye thankful. Verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. The last verse. And whatever ye do in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. There is need for us. And let me tell you something. This is what I love about the Orthodox circle. You see, let me say something. Let's assume this is Orthodox and this is Pentecostal so charismatic. Are you following me now? The Orthodox circle have done a great job in mastering the place of true Christian character and morality. That's why some of us who came from the Orthodox background before getting filled with the Holy Spirit, the remnant of that training still remains in us. I follow me now. And so, many Orthodox circles have rejected the side of the anointing. I follow me now. At the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And they argue about tongues, argue about all of this and live under the law and do all kinds of things. But one thing I can tell you is that in many Orthodox circles, when someone is sick, the next 12, 20, 30 minutes, you see people rushing to come and greet him. You hardly find that in Pentecostal circles. We always like celebrating. When you buy a new car, we can come to your house. But when somebody is dead, ah, you are not supposed to die. Who wants to identify? That's why in many Pentecostal circles, when their members die, they send them back to the mother church. They say, go and bury them. But when it's time to get married or celebrate a new post, what happens? I am your pastor. Are you getting blessed? Ah, it's a nice message. The Lord help us. Hallelujah. And so, both the Pentecostals and the Orthodox circles, they are not wrong. Both of them are incomplete. The revelations of Christ are complementary, not supplementary. Are you following me? Supplementary means you can replace one for another. The holiness movement was not a wrong movement. The word of faith movement was not a, a wrong movement. Are you following me now? The charismatic movement at Sousa Street was not wrong. But the trouble is when we section out a movement and base our entire lives on it, we find out that we are missing on other ingredients that are meant to give us complete preparation. So we have men and women who are very holy and contrite. And the world can attest to the fact that we love God. But then the sick come and they keep getting sick. People are poor. People are not living the lives they are supposed to live. And then we have on one side manifestations of the Spirit. Wheelchairs and all kinds of things. But when you talk about disorderliness and lawlessness, you still find it there. Hallelujah. And you see all kinds of things. Disorderliness. There must be a sense of decorum and maturity a level of character and punishment that the spirit of God brings in us hallelujah that's the reason why God is building us and equipping us so that we are not only anointed but we truly can represent him have you seen some people you always let me tell you the more you become like Christ the more you are well favored everyone wants to be around you hallelujah have you seen some people every time they come around you you don't know when you have removed something to sow into their lives or every time they come you seem to respect them you may be older than them but there's a carriage of his presence you see the character of the spirit you do something they are supposed to swallow you up and when you come they tell you it's all right i can't pretend i'm not angry but it's all right and you're like what kind of person is this until your life shocks your community such that they can say what kind of person are you some years ago the holy spirit asked me to draw a graph and write the fruit of the spirit versus their manifestation in my life and i was working in power raw power when i wrote it i was i was disappointed to the core a lot of people say, Josh, you're a nice person. No, you are gentle, you are this. When I plotted that graph, I received grace to, I don't know if I tore the paper or not. 
but it stung my ego because I said, Okay, God, so where is the ambassador? Hallelujah. I choose to represent him in his entirety. I choose to represent him that the same testimony that is given about me on stage should be the same testimony anywhere. You know, I, I always share this, and let me say it. I was in a bus one time going to Sabo. Hallelujah. And in that bus, there was an elderly woman. Then there was a the very little boy, the conductor. And he was shouting and just insulting everyone in the car. You know, you talk and you talk back and yell back. And there was this elderly woman. And I think she wanted them to reduce the price or something. And this boy would not let this woman rest. He was just shouting and murmuring. And at a point, I got agitated in my spirit. I said, can you imagine this boy? This, is, this woman is old enough to be his grandmother. And he's shouting. And my old man wanted to just give this guy a dirty slap. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit put me in check. And then when it was time for me to pay the bus fare, they said, ah, uh, someone has paid. When I turned back, I saw one e and member. I said, God, thank you. You know how to cover. Cover for our weaknesses. We'll explain later on. How many of you have corrupted the things God is doing in your life by certain attributes? Don't tell me it does not matter. Are you listening to me? Don't let anybody preach any gospel to you that true christian character and conformity to the christ-like life does not matter it does oh yes it does when you are truly conformed to the life of christ then you find out god can trust you god can bring more ladies for you guys so that you counsel them because he knows that there will not be need for an emergency meeting in heaven Hallelujah. God can bring money. God can bring money or something and trust you and make you a millionaire. And know that there will not be an emergency meeting in heaven trying to manage what you have become. Looking on to Jesus. Looking on to Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. I call us tonight to a point where we begin to re-examine our character there are certain languages that should not be found among believers hallelujah and many of us use them carelessly and we are very happy about that immediately you finish using the word you say oh, Jerry, let's pray and someone is just looking at you and then you tell the person, I think you need the baptism. You say, me, if the baptism will make me like what I'm seeing, I'm not interested. Hallelujah. God is raising and training leaders. You know why I'm saying this? Because God is going to be committing ministries into our hands. God is going to be committing wealth to our hands. There are many people that when God blesses today, little financial prosperity, everybody around you becomes a slave. They must lick your leg and then we claim we are acknowledging God. God is bringing us to a point where we truly let our lives become windows. So on one side, you heal the sick, cast out devils and manifest the workings of the gifts of the Spirit. And then on another side, men see you full of the Christ-like life. That they come and visit you when they bump into your house without invitation you will not need to arrange certain things and say where are these videos jerry yes, stay back then you just bring up any him there is need for the manifestation of the christ like and let me tell you something there are two groups of people in this place those who say why did i come this night for this program i will be coming for only miracle service where there's no much preaching or those who say, Lord, I contend for transformation. I contend for transformation. I, I contend for transformation. That's why many of you, God has delayed you from running. He has told you what he wants you to do. You wonder why you are not ready. On your mark, set, set has been for years. When will go come when you hear this message and conform to it? Hallelujah. 
as a lady everybody looks at you and they are seeing you very nice and pretty doing your hair and the guy just looks at you and says these are the kind of church girls that look like indisciplined ladies so the guy sags his jeans misrepresenting his maker and bouncing and coming and then begins to smoke in front of you and speak nonsense and says oh queen now, they really hallelujah he comes to you thinking you are so cheap and he can go away with you then when he comes you get two chairs and sit him down and begin to expound scriptures more perfectly by the end of that exposition you either say two things i repent or all right i'll see you later you say what of my number i said no thank you the true testimony of, about your life is not supposed to be heard among believers but unbelievers only unbelievers have the right to attest to the fact that you are living a christ-like life or not and as god gave me this message to prepare i felt like dying because i said god why do you give me messages that will flog me first on stage as i'm preaching right now i know the areas god is saying when you finish let's go and do our own finish your delivery how many of us have seen a need to cry unto god and say lord i need to conform i've been looking up to many things and i've been gauging my progress based on aberrations and things that are not christ but we must come to a point where we align hallelujah looking up to jesus the bible says put off malice bitterness don't say i was born like that all of us are like that in our family you step on my show i match you and give you a piece of my mind and go back to sleep that's how i am i'm that kind of person then you must change because the bible says therefore if any man is in christ he's a new creation but you must press that's why we worship him as you worship him you find out that the miracles you need in your life are not just bodily you need certain radical levels of transformation let me tell you something the more you are conforming to christ the more they want to make you a leader everywhere in your department in your faculty there are many of you who just see someone who will come and say sorry is there something i can do for you i want to help you wash your clothes you wonder why they are seeing something in you let the weight of your glory 